Right, let's do a bit more stuff. So I'm over in England now, and uh, I've just pulled over off the motorway just to set up my camera and uh, microphone and stuff. And we are heading into the bike shed in London to go and see a friend. And uh, I'm sure many of you have never ridden in London. So I thought I would try and see if I can get a bit of footage. I think I'm, uh, I'm still about 50 minutes from my destination, so I'm not, how mu I'm not sure how much of this video I'm going to edit out. But nonetheless, here we go. Big old roundabout. Keep going round. Follow my sat nav back to the M25. Close my visor down a bit. So, for the international viewers, if there are any, um, there's a ring road, a big sort of kind of motorway around what would sort of commonly be called the Greater London area, and it's called the M25, Motorway 25, and we are going to go one, I think it is one junction now from here, where I am, along that ring road. Uh, so there's the big signpost there, look, and we're going to go towards the Dartford Crossing Maidstone M25. Just uh, stay behind this big lorry, no need to rush. Yet. Nothing coming, and on we go. So, I hope... Uh, Everybody can hear me on the, on the microphone and I hope that the camera stays in position at this speed. So, um, here we go, onto the motorway. I've got an Audi coming up, overtaking me from behind. And now I can get back over and overtake. This is a typical sort of motorway in the UK. Of course, uh, we drive on the left over here, and the way it works is you're all supposed to be driving along in that left hand lane, and then the other two lanes are just for overtaking. So, really, as soon as you finish overtaking whatever you're going to overtake, should be going back into that lane on the left hand side and many people don't well this black Audi is well, just uh, I'm on cruise control about 70 mile an hour it'll say 72 on the dash but on the sat nav that's about 70 or even probably even less actually 68 69 So we've got about four miles uh, before our junction and uh, on the left, uh, just up here on the left is uh, Brands Hatch Race Circuit which is in Kent which is quite a famous race circuit It actually began life as a grass track and over the years it got developed and then turned into a paved track for road racing, you know, tarmac racing I suspect it was probably concrete at the beginning a uh, huge amount of history at the Brown Tatch Race Circuit. It's a lovely little track actually, I've ridden it a number of times. And it, it's cool because it goes up and down and it's got like, you know, the nice undulations. Um, they, there's a short circuit and a GP circuit. And actually, I'm pretty sure the Formula One was held there many years ago, which would have been crazy because it's a tiny little racetrack. But then the Formula 1 cars were much smaller then, so it makes some sense. So we're about four miles now, roughly three miles from our turning. Have you 
you're watching from America, you might notice that the, the trucks that we have over here that uh, move our freight around, they're very different to American trucks. We're just going to go past this one now. And they all have this little short square cab on the front. And uh, the engine's underneath the cab. Most of the American ones, they're, uh, the engine's out front. So I think for Americans, uh, when they see, look at those one, when they see the European trucks, they're quite different. To be honest, there's even some sort of differences in many, in many um, of, the, of the sort of trucks and things, even from England to Europe, there are certain things that we have in England, certain rules, weight limits and such. Uh, and in Europe, they, some of the roads, uh, some of the countries are allowed larger weights, so they have bigger lorries. But these freight lorries, like this one on the left here, that's a standard size. Um, don't, don't quote me on this, I think they're 74 ton maximum, something like that. So we're coming up on our junction now. And actually every, everyone's slowing down because we've got uh, the Dartford Tunnel. I think we're coming off before the Dartford Tunnel, I hope so. And uh, I'm going to slow down with the traffic. I've got about 1,700 metres to my junction. Considering how close we are to London, it seems quite rural, doesn't it? Lots of trees and... Morning, sir, on your motorbike, going to work or something, possibly. Right, so I think this is our lane we need to be in. So that was our little stint on the M25. And we are east of London. In fact, we're so far east that the, uh, the Dartford Tunnel goes underneath the River Thames and there's a bridge. So if you're going north as we are currently, you go through the tunnel. And if you're going southbound, you go over the bridge and there's a toll. You have to pay a toll both ways, each way. It's a toll bridge, but the bridge got too small for all the traffic, so they built a tunnel. Right, it's telling me on my sat nav to turn left on this one, which says London Bexley Heath A2. A2. So we'll follow that. Rather boringly, it's telling me I've got 16 kilometres on this A2. Now, this is not an M road, but an A road. And the, uh, you might notice that um, they look exactly the same. Look, there's three lanes there, three lanes of traffic, probably. Three lanes that you can drive in. And uh, the speed limit is the same here, it's the 70 miles an hour. And um, why is it an A road and not an M road? Well, I think that the reality is that most large A roads like this were originally just a, a normal carriageway road where you would have had, you know, uh, on the left you would have had one direction, on the right you would have had the other direction. So probably 25, 35 years ago this would have been a tiny little road, possibly not even in exactly the same location but very close to it. And over the years, the quantity of traffic has just grown and grown and grown to the point where they've had to make the roads bigger. Oh, there's a big old jet up there, can you see that? It's like a, it's cool, it's got the little jets on the back. Uh, the roads um, have had to got bigger and bigger and bigger, but it's not classified as a motorway now. There are some things that that allows certain road users to do. So in the UK, when you're 
uh, a motorbike rider for example and in Europe we have a tiered system so you don't you can't just like jump straight on a big thousand cc bike and rip up the road for the first couple of years you're limited on an A2 license so I think something like 34 brake horsepower or something uh, and prior to that you can only have a 125 cc uh, which also has a limit and if you've got a 125 cc you have to have L plates for learner on the back and you can't go on a motorway as a learner so you can't learn to drive on a motorway and you can't go on a motorway on a on a motorbike with L plates a little bit complicated uh, to explain but that's the, the, the crux of it but on this A road which is exactly the same as a motorway you can drive as a learner and you can drive um, as a learner bike as well so and the same rules apply and if you're lucky enough to live near one then you can practice riding on driving on a motorway and if you're not then you won't actually have any experience of riding or driving on a motorway until you've passed your test so it's basically somewhere where you can never learn to use it's a, a motorway in the UK you never actually learn how to use it which I find absolutely mental bizarre right I've never actually used this road in my life so I'm gonna have to pay attention a bit to where I'm going and I need this a lane here for now now up front you've got some signs that says emission les and you les you've got the low emission zone and the ultra low emission zone and uh I suspect that many places in the world are getting this, like California and there's loads of places are getting the low emission zones now. Uh, my motorbike won't, uh, won't have any problems in the, in the ULES or the LES um, zones, partly because it already um, passes all those tests because it's a five month old bike. And secondly, because I'm actually on a Dutch plate and I have looked into that and as far as I can see if you're on a foreign plate on a motorbike I don't think it really matters much but don't quote me on that well this is a 50 miles an hour now so I'm going to just set my uh, cruise control on 50 and just trickle our way into London so we're heading westbound now into greater London area and um, you'll begin to see look these houses on the side of the road look how close they are and of course years ago this would have been a tiny little road with hardly any cars on it wouldn't really matter but now you've got basically a motorway look right in front of your front door now, the pollution alone must be horrific let alone the noise I definitely couldn't live there that would that's no good for me no it's a big no for me Bit of a rush, are you, trucker? Practically tailgating the car in front of him. Not quite, but he's quite close, eh? Like, if that BMW had to stop, that truck would never stop. They just, like, absolutely destroy the back of that Beamer. We keep clear of that lorry driver. He's obviously a bit of a div. So as we get closer to the centre areas of London, you'll see the greenery slowly disappear. We've still got some trees hanging about at the moment, but I suspect in another couple of miles that'll almost be gone. Although there are lots of green areas in London, for those of you that have never been, there's lots of parks and green spaces. and. Uh, many many years ago in the Victorian era when they put those bits of land aside we're quite thankful for them now I mean London is I mean it's not the biggest city in the world by any means but it is massive 
and they're my Dutch viewers in the Netherlands over there. Um, I think the, the three major cities that you've got, Amsterdam, Utrecht and Rotterdam, I dare say it all sit in London with happily with, with space, space to spare. So look, the number plate on front, you've got a learner, That's so someone's learning to drive in that car. And uh, the number plate is PA55 WTF, which would mean like pass, so you've passed your test. And then WTF, what the F? That's a, quite a cool number plate for, uh, for a, a, someone who's teaching people to drive professionally. Pass, what the F? He's obviously paid for that, by the way, that, that wasn't an accident. In the, in the UK, you can choose, there are numbers, there's a, there's a number of number plates, thousands and thousands of number plates, millions probably, and many of them have been bought already, and you can buy all kinds of things. So we'll see if we can spot some more, but the typical is uh, letter, letter, number, number, letter, 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 and for the older cars, that changes around a bit. I can't really remember it offhand. Number plates is not something I've been thinking about for a while. All right, I think we're going to scooch over a lane. Another thing you might notice, I'm not really sure if I've been if picking it up on the camera, but basically it's a very affluent area of the world and you will see a lot of expensive cars we i mean you know that's quite a normal sight a big a big mercedes like that that's just a normal car over here and um i'm sure as we get nearer to london's sort of center of london area we'll start seeing even more luxury vehicles As I say, this might be a bit of a long video, but never mind. Maybe we'll edit some of it out. So we've still got some trees look around us. A big wall one side, but trees around us and it's a pretty grotty, miserable looking road. Not overly busy yet. It's this is a Tuesday morning. What's the date? It's the 17th of uh, the 9th, 2024, as it says on my dash and it is about 20 past 10 in the morning so I think most of the people that were heading into work are probably at work by now and this is just the last dribbles of people heading into work about a mile and a half till the next junction apparently and here we go look you're starting to see some high-rise uh, buildings now apartments or flats someone needs to tell me what the difference between an apartment and a flat is because I don't know maybe it's just an American word and an English word but, uh, people with more money tend to say they live in an apartment and then people with poor money but that are poorer tend to say they live in a flat. That's, the, that's my understanding of it, anyway. So, yeah, we've actually got a train line to the left of us. Right, now, here we go. Got to start paying attention to where I'm going after this because uh, I've never been riding or driving in this part of London. I used to live in London, but not, not here. <laughs> Maybe that's a video for another day. Mm, the traffic's really start slowing down there. I think I'm going to back off a bit. So I don't know if you can see, I'm using the little Beeline Moto 2. And I thought this, being in London, there's a lot of junctions, a lot going on. So I thought it might be a good to ride into London with it and just see 
how good it was in that uh, kind of environment. I'm actually running a little video alongside just uh, seeing how long the battery lasts and uh, stuff like that so it's interesting to see. I'm not sure why we've slowed down quite so much but we have. I'm pretty sure the speed limit is still 50 so yeah it says there on the road 50. So my sat nav is saying keep to the right as far as I can tell. So no need for me to be in that left lane at the moment. The A102, yes, that's what it says on my dashboard. That's the right way then. I'm still getting used to this little sat-nav. There's a private plate there, look, S7 NMT. So that plate's probably called Nigel Martin Tomlinson or something, but it means nothing to us, but I'm sure he's very proud of it. Total waste of money in my opinion. Get in lane it says, but how do you know which lane you need? Something I do know about London, actually, just uh, having moved away from the UK seven years ago and now visiting as a visitor, is that the speed limits in, the, in London have dropped in, in loads and loads of places down to 20 miles an hour, which I'm sure is fantastic for all the pedestrians, uh, but trying to get around in London at 20 miles an hour. And London is humongous, by the way. You know, it's very difficult to uh, to try and stick to 20. I'm hoping that uh, I will do my best at that today. Probably fail miserably. Look at all those buildings, there we go. Now that's the, the view of London most people are expecting, of all those big high-rise buildings that I'm pretty sure that that's the business district, what they call the city. I can see City Bank. I don't know if that means anything. All right, we've got a traffic jam. And my satnav says I am pulling off in 840 meters. And I don't know how much filtering I can do here because not much room. We might well get a bit stuck here and elongate the video further. But we'll see. Maybe this nice transit custom will give me some space. Who knows? I would say in general, in Europe, actually, people are a bit more polite about motorbikes, giving them space. And in England, there's more tendency to not really care or give any space or this bloke's literally getting changed in his car swerving all over the place I can see him in the mirror putting his t-shirt on I've got another bike up my ass I'm not in I'm I'd like to get through as well mate but this bloke is mucking about in his car and I can't tell what he's going to do next horrible road surface. Right, it says 300 metres on the left, so I think I'm going to have to pull over to the left after this truck, this little truck here. Come on taxi. There you go, that's our first black London cab. So there you go, that's what they look like. See you later, mate. Oi. Oh my gosh. This is not terribly obvious. Alright, we're going through the Blackwall Tunnel. Never been through the Blackwall Tunnel before. 
There we go, it's a brand new experience just for me. And you can join me in my adventure. <laughs> Lovely old, whatever that is, entrance gate. Probably it was a toll gate originally, I'm guessing. Keep in lane, I will try and keep in lane. So far, unless you spotted one, I've not seen a single policeman or woman or any kind of police vehicles. Well, this is uh, very slow. Of course, I might have to do the obligatory rev for my engine. It's not that my bike's that loud, but. My bike's not the best at going slow. It doesn't really like going slow. That's the supermoto heart inside of it, said, telling itself to go fast. Stoppy stoppings. I want to get hit up the arse by that truck. Don't know why he's indicating right like that is anything. You stay there, pal. Sure, we'll move. It does clearly say stay in lane, so I don't really know what this lorry behind is trying to achieve by indicating. Just stay there. And also, there's see like on the ceiling on the right hand side, you've got like yellow bollards in on the ceiling. See that up there? I'm pretty sure those trucks are not even allowed on that side of the road. He would have very quickly been hitting a lot of bollards if he'd gone into the right hand lane. There's our mate with the uh, private platelet S7 NMT. It's a big old car. I have to say it's quite hot in this tunnel. It's up to 19 degrees in here on my dashboard. I would not want to get stuck in here in the summer. I bet this gets roasting. My bike's beginning to, the fan's kicked in on my bike now, so uh, I'm getting heat from underneath the bike as well. Lovely. 20 degrees now on the dashboard. Must be, uh, we're heading up uphill now, so we must be getting towards the end of it. There we go, I've never done the Blackwall Tunnel before. This is horrific, isn't it? Imagine being stuck in traffic in this every morning. I bet this is just like gridlock every morning. So, under the River Thames, I reckon that's where we've just been. Must be quite a wide bit of the river here because this is a big, uh, long tunnel. You know when you've got a car in here and you just think this person can't drive, well that woman in that BMW, I don't think she knows how to drive properly. Keeping my distance. I can see daylight, yes! We're alive! This is where this sat nav, it's going to be very interesting to see how it fares. It's saying keep right in 140 metres, so it's just imagine uh, it's just carrying on on this road. I'm not in 
any rush, I don't know where I'm going, all traffic lights have stopped. Hope no one T-bones me, gets me up the rear. Right, okay. Well, this is the first stop, traffic light stop so far. I barely even see the traffic lights from where I'm sitting. So yeah, I'm not one for living in cities. This is not for me living around here. Right, it's 30 now, it's 40 mile an hour coming up, look, on the yellow east back signs. Might be able to do a bit of filtering up here, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's necessary actually. Traffic is moving, so. I think for American viewers, you might notice just how narrow the roads are as well. I mean, I've not really been to America as an adult, I went there as a kid, but I don't, you know, I think some of your lanes are about one and a half as wide as our single lane. Obviously a seasoned uh, London motorbike rider up there is just uh, getting on with it. As I say, I don't really know where I'm going, so I'm just going to chill, keep safe as much as I can. I mean, the way, the way I was taught to ride is basically everyone is trying to kill you, so you've got to be defensive sometimes, you've got to be aggressive sometimes, and uh, for the moment I think defensive, you know, give myself look, plenty of space, I know what's behind me, there's a big gap behind me. Oh look, here we go, quite London-y. Nice bit of graffiti, lovely. Every city, right? Nothing new there. So it's saying carry on on the A106 for another 2.3 kilometers, which is about one and a half miles. I could have set my sat nav to miles, but I couldn't be bothered. <laughs> I did, I did change my dash to miles an hour. So at least I can see what speed I've got to do. Not that many luxury cars so far, but then I don't think we're in a real luxury area. That's the um, the O2 Arena and the old um, what's it called uh, Olympic Park over there. To my right, you can sort of see that twirly whirly slidey thing up there. Some sort of sculpture, I think. sure why this guy's doing 30 mile an hour but I think we're gonna scooch around him in a moment. Still a kilometer away from our junction. Oh he's speed it up now. So there's a C63 AMG there. Correct me if I'm wrong but I think there's a V8. Some sort of tinted number plate because he's cool. I don't know why this van is going so slow. And I know this is undertaking, but... Right. Jesus, mate. What are you doing? I'm pretty sure I'm coming off here. A106, yeah. Hope you can hear me alright. Pop my visor down while I'm speeding up a bit. So those European viewers, this is a 60 kilometer an hour road. Get my visor back up. 
Right, here we go. Now look, a little delivery ride here. Well, we have those in Europe, that's uh, normal, right? We see them everywhere. I'm gonna keep my wits about me because I know that there are bike jackings in London on a regular basis. And I think that they would love to be scooping about around on my bike because it's quite a good fun bike. So, uh, they normally ride around on big scooters with no number plates. Right, here we go, we're into a bit of a drama here. No need to rush. Well, we can hear that AMG. Stop for the traffic lights. He won't. I'll stop here with the... Right, he's saying to me, I've got to go left up there, look. What do you reckon? Could be. I've got to get off the lights pretty sharpish and turn left. Doesn't seem right, but there we go, we'll go up there. I'll indicate left anyway, just so give the other road users half a chance. Don't come up on my left hand side scooter. Right, come on in. Let's go green, shall we? Right into one of these 20 mile an hour zones, let you see. Right, well, these are quite beautiful houses, aren't they, opposite this park? I'd like to live there, but I suspect you need millions. beautiful part of the city this is. Park right in front of your house. Look at that. Lovely old buildings. And, uh, none of them have been fettled with too much. It's all, su all survived from the war, Second World War. It's quite obvious when you see uh, a house that got bombed because, uh, well it's not always actually, sometimes they rebuilt them with stock bricks. To be fair, actually, the tops of those look like they had some brickwork done. It's very difficult to know unless you really know what you're looking for, but London history is pretty cool. Start of the posh cars, look. <laughs> to be fair, I could probably sneak some up. Well, we're all right. We'll do that in a minute when I think about it more. Stop looking at houses. The People's Park Tavern. Ooh, little pub there. Right, I oh, don't know, he's indicating right now I won't go around him. I'll go around him this side. So there's the entrance to the park, whatever park that is. If you know it, let us know. So you have to give way to the bus uh, in this country, so it's indicating, so the law is you have to let it go. There's not too much problem with it being a 20 kilometre limit because we're hardly even doing that. Still lovely little houses, much, much smaller these ones than the other ones, but still beautiful. You've got red London stocks and then the yellows above. I quite like the way they mix them. Maybe I'll do a video about that one day. It's quite fascinating. Well, I'm sort of stuck behind this bus, I'm afraid to tell you. Not much to see. Another little park there, look. Lovely, nice bit of open space. Another fancy schmancy Mercedes. The Mossbourne Victoria Park. 
And that's some sort of a school by the looks of it. I don't really know what you were doing there, mate. You're about to just drive up behind a bunch of parked cars. Must be on his phone or something. He's beckoning me round, so we'll go. Why not? Scooch past a few things if I can. Wiggle my way through that little lot. After you, my lady. Straight over on the roundabout, it says. Oh yes, lots of different types of traffic to deal with now. Got pedestrians and cyclists and give way marks and speed limits and City rock driving and riding is not for everyone, eh? I must admit, with a 20 mile an hour speed limit, this is like pathetic. This is it, we're doing 20 mile an hour, this is it, top speed in London. You walk at four mile an hour. Can you imagine how long it takes to get around London at 20 miles an hour? It's pathetic. And it, and it would have cost millions of pounds to set it up, millions and millions, because you've got all sorts of speed cameras to control it. Oh, it's, nah. England is done. It's no wonder as soon as people make money, they leave England. They make the money and then get out. And hide it in offshore bank accounts, away from the tax man. Oh my golly, this is so boring at 20 miles. This is 20 mile an hour. What if I can set my sat my I can, I can do my cruise control. Second gear, 20 mile an hour. Oh boring. This is exciting, isn't it? What great video making this is. 20 mile an hour through London. A little beep beep from my sat nav, telling me I've got to turn left here. It says I'm three minutes from my destination, so quite a good way to come through London, I think. It hasn't been that difficult. turn right in a short space of time. Shall I do what the scooter's done? Yeah, well, why not, eh? Well, I am turning right up here. So, back over. Get my indicator on. I think we must be very close now to the uh, bike shed. I have been here a couple of times before, and this does look about right. So again, the bus is pulling out, look, you have to give way to that bus up there, which they did. Hackney we're in, Hackney. The borough of the London borough of Hackney. I like those old green tiles on the wall there. That's that's really reminds me of London. Cyclists going past me everywhere, both sides of the road, and he was on his phone. <laughs> oh, come on, sort yourselves out. sort of giving myself a bit of space but I think really if it's clear I'm going to start making some 
forward momentum. Yeah, got a traffic light here, so that might mean I can scooch around a few people. Nope. Hackney housing has blocked my way. No, they've all pulled off anyway, for some reason. Apparently this is the way not to go. Go around this van again. Not for the first time. I'm gonna tuck in. Please let me know in the comments if I'm breaking the law by overtaking here. I have no idea, but I'm going around gingerly. three kilometers to my next junction so it says where are you going okay just there like that watch out for that scooter early VFR 750 there that coming out of the back of that van. Oh mate that van is broken. It stinks. We're gonna take this opportunity to squidge round. It's my understanding that as long as I don't overtake the lead car I can do that on zigzags but please correct me if I'm wrong and I won't do it in the future. Well, it's a green light, so I think I can make my way down the road. So, sneaky, sneaky. Do you really need to shut that whole side of the road off for that? I don't really think so. Now, is he indicating right or is he... He is indicating right, yeah. Let's go around the back of that one. London riding, eh? He's turning right, so I thought I'd get this side of him. Uh, 750 metres to my next turn. Another black cab there, look. Oh, they always look quite London-y, don't they? It's good that they've managed to keep the sort of look of them. What are you doing, you pleb? This is your first day on Earth. Take, but as soon as the speed limit's 20, no point. Turning off, so we've gone round them. On the fours are 125. Right, we're very nearly there, so I'm not gonna, probably not gonna overtake anything else for the moment. Is round to the right, the traffic lights changing. And I dare say I can squeeze to the front of 
the queue there. So actually, just underneath this little train bridge on the left-hand side is the bike shed. Hope it's open. <laughs> Well, sort of very Londony, isn't it? Some funky street art up there. Wonder what that building on the corner is uh, that I'm facing with the bus just went in front of. Wonder what that used to be. It's an interesting looking building. Traffic lights always seem to take so long. Is it open? Yeah, I think it's open. Tuesday 12 pm until. So it's not actually open yet, I don't think. No, it's not actually open. So, uh. There we go, should have checked the times. Well, I think we'll end the video there. I'm going to wait around for my mate somewhere and uh, I'm sure he'll be here soon. Thanks for watching and uh, catch you in the next bit.